Broadcasting live from the WGBB World Headquarters here in New York. This is the Big Fat Joey Show with your host, Big Fat Joey. Hey, Sid. Morning. Big Fat Joey. Big Fat Joey Show. Biggest thing on radio. What's up? Wow, it's the last day of July. I can't get over this. Last day of July, P3's birthday. P3 turning 16 today. Happy birthday, P3. Well, I'm excited he's turning 16, but 16 comes to um, a lot of things going on with 16. I'd rather him be a baby. Yeah, a lot easier when he was in the uh, in the stroll or what have you. Always knew where he was, especially when he was an infant. You put him down in his little car seat. Uh, you knew where he was. Now he's in the car. Now he's in the car, <laughs> in the driver's seat, uh, getting out and about. Getting his license, and uh, you know, P three is getting older by the minute. It does go fast, when they say. Yes, absolutely. Well, you know what? The next day, it's August already. I can't get over it. August is like the Sunday of summer. I would taking it slow. I wanted to roll slow because um, I don't like what happens after August. <laughs> well, August is the swan song of summer. Unfortunately, once August hits, really, you know, I don't like to say, it, but summer is kind of downhill before you know it. Uh, you know, the uh, Great Pumpkin Charlie Brown will be on, Charlie Brown Thanksgiving, Charlie Brown Christmas, bing, All bang, right, boom. stop it at that. <laughs> there you go. I think Christmas is in some like 140 days from now. It's just going too fast. But unfortunately, I mean, the fall is fun, but the winter is not. And then once you get into the winter, January, February, March, April, just take forever. I mean, it was the other day we were looking forward to Memorial Day weekend. Memorial Day weekend came and went. And, uh, you know, here we are, you know, a couple of minutes on the verge of August 1st, but speaking of being on the verge, we're on the verge of another super fun weekend event coming up on the 6th of August over at Barron's Cove in Sag Harbor, because today we have the founder and co-creator of the Hamptons Interactive Brunch, Vanessa Gordon. Vanessa has put together, this I believe is the third year of the Interactive Brunch, and this woman is doing her best to shake off all the uh, COVIDness and get everyone back together because she is looking to help the Children's Museum of the East End. All proceeds will benefit the Children's Museum of the East End from the Hamptons Interactive Brunch. And we are super excited, super honored to be a part of it next week. Thank you very much, Vanessa. Thank you also to Brian Kelly and Sean Kosky of Ticket to Events. They are planning the event along with Vanessa. They are, obviously, as you all know, they're friends of the Big Fat Joey Show. They are event planners second to none. They are out and about putting this shindig together. And better than that, they are also the co-founders of the event. These two guys working diligently, working hard. I, I don't know how any of them get any sleep because you know, I said in my interview a couple of times I've texted them or, uh, you know, DM them in the middle of the night. So, oh, you know, it's midnight. I have this idea. Let me, uh, let me just do this now while I remember it. I text them and I close my eyes and go to sleep. And the next morning I wake up and they responded to my text or my DM like three minutes later after I, after I already text them. So they're always on the move. They are. They're so amazing. If you need any kind of party plans, like they said, it's better to call an event planner because you could enjoy that party. You could enjoy that party, sit back and have fun with your friends and family and let everyone else do the running around. You know, that's what they're there for. But they are on fire. They cross every T and dot every I and everything is amazing. And I just can't wait to see what they what they do. Yeah. What they do and how they do it, they always do the best. And you know what? Obviously, Vanessa Gordon, very, very busy individual. She's also the publisher of East End Taste Magazine. You know what? With all that she's doing, obviously. And as since said, we've had Brian and Sean on before. You need an event planner. What they can do for you is nothing for what you can do for yourself. You know what? You tell them what you want. You look to get what you want. Give it to them. Just show up to your party and rock out and enjoy the day. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. We're so thrilled, and I'm looking forward to it. We are looking forward to it. And also today, we have another friend of the Big Fat Joey Show on. We have Joanne J. Bird Phillips. Now, 
Last week, we had Tony Leone on, the founder and owner of Strongbox Theater. He is the uh, gentleman who's putting together the Strongbox Theater over in East Rockaway, New York. But in the interim, he has Strongbox in the Park, which is a short series of uh, works. It's a festival he's doing Friday, Saturday, and Sunday up until this upcoming Sunday, August 7th. But Joanne is giving him her 30 plus years experience in the business assistance. She is a lover of all things art and performance. So we have her on with us today. It's great speaking with her. Joanne is just so amazing. She is an amazing artist and what she's doing is just so cool to be involved in this. Definitely, definitely is. And you know what? It's always, always fun having her on the show with us. And then finally today, we have an up-and-coming artist like we always do. We know You know how we love our indie artists here on the Big Fat Joey Show. Today, we have multi-talented singer, songwriter, and actress, Jaden Zoe. And with that, we'll also be listening to her hit song, What is Love?, which is dropping this Friday, the 5th of August. Now, you know... Like a lot of our indie artists, you know, a lot of them come from New York and go to California. A lot of them come from California and go to New York. Well, Jaden, um, she went all the way out to L.A. She did some modeling. She's been on some TV shows like Chasing Destiny, uh, Not Safe Show with Nikki Glaser. She's been on Jimmy Kimmel Live. She's been a, a model. So super talented, super fun to have her on, and super excited to hear her new song, What is Love. But without any further ado... Up next is our interview with Vanessa Gordon. All right, everyone, let's welcome to the line CEO and publisher of East End Taste, as well as the founder of Hamptons Interactive Brunch, Vanessa Gordon. Vanessa, welcome to the Big Fat Show. We show how are you? Thank you. Well, it's so happy to be here. How are you today? I am doing well. We're super excited to have you on with us, and we're super excited to see that the Hamptons Interactive Brunch is back on after the little hiatus that the whole world had to take these past two years. That's right. Hi, Vanessa. We're so excited to have you today. You uh, you have the, the Hamptons on fire. You have a big event coming up. We want to hear all about it. Amazing. Yeah, we are so excited. So we are bringing the Hamptons back after, uh, my goodness, yes, two years. So 2019. Um, so we are bringing it back this year, a little bit more intimate, um, even more curated. It's going to be at Barron's Cove in Sag Harbor. And it, what's so beautiful is that this nautical refined hotel right on the water on West Rock Street. Um, it's going to be a sm smaller group of people. We're usually um, capped at like 250, but this year we're going to be at just under 100 persons, um, mainly invitation only. And it's going to be an amazing full spread of delicious food um, that we curated with uh, the Barrett's Cove team. So everything from like Eggs Benedict and lobster rolls and all good stuff. And then in addition to that, we have a full signature cocktail menu that's created by our presenting sponsor, Origin Vodka. So what made you start this Hamptons Interactive Brunch? What, what brought you to say, you know what? I'm going to put something there because you are very, very busy. Between that, between your East End taste and everything else you do, how did you find literally room on your plate for one more function? Oh, that's great. Yeah, no, so I am one that actually thrives on being busy. I love what I do. I love every moment of it. And what happened was, is I have known uh, my event team, Brian, Kelly, and Sean Coffey for many years, and they do a number of events in the Hamptons uh, throughout the summer season. And I knew right away that if I were to do an event that I would hire them and only work with them because I've seen what they're able to produce. I mean, it's, it's phenomenal. 
So with that being said, I have just a casual chat, um, just as friends with them. My goodness, is going back in early 2018. And I said to them, I want to do an event. I don't, I don't know why. I, I didn't really have a purpose or a goal per, per se. Um, the only thing I knew I wanted to do was just bring colleagues, friends, and the like together. I thought that there was a void in Saturday afternoon events. There was something out here for many, many years called Super Saturday that was a true staple, uh, highly anticipated event that would bring a couple thousand people. Mm -hmm. loved, um, it. loved it. That was my favorite. <laughs> I was loved my favorite it. event. Fun. <laughs> fun, but they didn't do it anymore. They don't do it anymore, and it's such a bummer. So I mm -hmm. said, for Tyson, thing. And it was so funny when I mentioned them, I said, I said, well, how many people are you thinking? And they're like, I'm like, oh, 30 people, luncheon, you know, networking, drinks, food. You know, we could do a little you know, table at a restaurant. They started laughing. They said, you could do a lot better than that. <laughs> and that's where it was it. And I said, let's dive right into it. With no holding back. And it went out with a bang its first year. It was incredible. We had so much support. I mean, people, you know, we had, at the, you know, sponsors included nest seekers. Uh, my goodness, we had Juice Press. We had a lot of great, um, you know, Jean-Pierre Cosmetics. Uh, oh, my gosh, we had India Hicks. We had so many great uh, brands and businesses. And then what was so cool is people just wanted to attend this so bad. So we had people just showing up right then and there. And uh, this is a Topping Roast House in mm -hmm. Burchampton. And it was just so well received. And it truly, it's, I'll be honest, it's, it's hard to impress me. It's hard to it really, really is. I, I'm very honest with people about that. The stat did, and I said we have to do it again. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm glad you, you picked up that Saturday because, as you mentioned, the uh, Super Saturday was a, a stellar event, and you know what, your event is now the new staple of the Hamptons because, like you said, have to fill a void have to fill that that saturday afternoon and we are glad you filled and that. she's also got the perfect team i mean brian and sean you can't get better no friends of they're Good amazing Fat Joe show. We, we love them and they are <laughs> top notch they do not you know when we see them at their events they're running around they need a vacation after an event <laughs> i know right do they ever take a vacation i never ask them that but they, they deserve one for sure. I, I take my I, I do take my trips, and they we should we should all just go together. Seriously, absolutely. Now, are you a foodie? Like, are you a real foodie? Because you said you were growing things in the backyard. Like, you know, I uh, you know, are you into like uh, you know s certain foods, breakfasts, or brunch? I'm I'm, I'm a huge brunch fan. Um, and what's funny is people think like, oh my god, you know she you know. Probably eat so I, I actually oh, I only eat like when I like when I travel um, a lot. So for instance, I was in Italy in Abruzzo, and man, was I I was really <laughs> chowing down per se. Um, and yeah, no, I mean I love food, but you know what's interesting is I as far as me cooking at home, yes, I do cook, but I need my full attention um, in the kitchen. I have two young children that are always pulling at my apron string, so to say. And <laughs> Um, it's really hard to do stuff at home. Um, it's that true expectation versus reality of, yeah, she must go out and, you know, do these full spreads at home and dinner parties. Yeah, with like 20 people behind the scenes helping me out. But, um, <laughs> you know. That's true. So you're a mommy, too. I mean, you have a lot yeah. on you, like, like Joe said, a lot on your plate just to be pulled by like children. I mean, it's good. It's the summer. There's no homework now. But um, I understand 100 percent with that. It's hard to like get everything done. It is. It is. Um, and then you, you, know, you have to prioritize, of course. Um, but then, um, yeah, it's 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 just been great. So yes, no, I love I love food. I definitely am a foodie. But I love digressing to what I was going to mention before is I love meeting chefs from around the world. So I met a fantastic uh, Michelin star chef when I was in the Algarve in Portugal, and you learn all these different you know cooking techniques mm -hmm. and things that you won't see in New York for another five years. I met a great chef over. In London, in uh, I was in Australia a few years ago before all this went down. Uh, met great people over there, and it's it's I love taking things, uh, ideas for, for and you know and bringing bringing those ideas here and saying you know oh well, you should definitely connect with this chef that I met in X Y Z um, region. It's just so fascinating, um, and I love learning. I love just soaking it in, learning and uh, giving back that appreciation. To these individuals I've met from every corner of the planet. 
And is that what's stirred on because you are a publisher of East and Taste? Is, is all of this is what stirred on to bring that about as well? That is correct, yes. So it, it, in tandem with that, so we branched, originally East and Taste truly began out of a love for writing. I actually come from a fiction writing background. And uh, when my daughter was born in 2014, I was just in my creative element. Just I started a blog, um, just writing, keeping myself busy, my mind active. And I was doing a lot of freelance writing at the time. Um, but then it wasn't until 2016 that someone in the marketing industry said to me, you know, you have something here. You should do something with it. I said, do what? <laughs> and I had no clue. Um, I, you know, I, I come from a writing background, so we're not exactly the most business savvy. But I learned as I went along. Um, by connecting and meeting the right people and taking their advice and, and running with it. I'm someone that does, abs- I absorb the information and I will act on it. I'm, I, I am a, a woman of my word, um, if you will. So I, I took that, I took that knowledge and I, I acted upon it. Um, but with, with East and Tate, yeah. So it started in the Hamptons covering the region here, um, for, you know, you know, meeting chefs, you know, doing restaurant profiles. Um, just keeping myself active, truly for fun, no other reason. And then it was travel when I was invited on press trips and um, opportunities to go to different corners of the world. And because I had studied abroad in London in particular, I connected with a lot of former writers that I knew, uh, professors of mine and such, and it just grew and grew and grew and grew from there. Um, so now I have a small staff based um, in, in, Lon- in London and I find myself there, I would say, a good 10 weeks out of the year. Um, just there for the Jubilee, for mm-hmm. instance. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot of fun. And the support, the international support is truly phenomenal. Um, and then we've branched out into Ireland now. I belong to a women's group over there. So hopefully I'll be heading over to their business conference in October. Um, but that's where a lot of the support has come from. So it's so cool to have that readership that's based, that makes us so unique, too, that's based overseas, looking at the Hamptons from the outside in. And that, I, I think you, you hit the nail right on the head, is to get an outsider's point of view, get their vision, see what's going on. because The new like, trends, all the right, new, new trends. trends. Like you said, with all the uh, world-renowned chefs that you come into contact with, a lot of what they're doing, you, as you said, New York City is not seeing it for another five years. And by that time, they're onto something new. And they're like, oh, New York City is doing that? Ah, I've been there, done that already. That's it. That's it. It's so funny. Like, I discovered new wines most people had never heard of. Um, I met people over in, you know, you think in Italy, oh, most people speak English. No, I was in these villages, mm-hmm. uh, young people um, in their late, early 20s. And you'd start speaking to them. And they would, you know, follow, follow you know, Italiano, you know, no spit. You know, they don't understand a word you're saying, and you're going, what? Wow, okay. So we were practically, um, we had to have a translator um, throughout the trip. Yeah. Fascinating. I mean, you know, we, we've traveled Europe extensively. Same thing. When, you, when you're in the big cities, yes, most people will speak. And just like, you know, if someone comes to New York, regardless of where they are in the world, they're going to find people who speak that language, but they're going to always speak English as well. But, yeah, I, I, I would guess to say, you know, if someone comes another part of the world and goes to the, our Midwest, the center of our country, the odds of them finding a native speaker are slim to the same thing. Traveling Italy or France, when you go into the little villages, you speak English. They look at you like, nah, it's, it's all French, it's all Italian here. We don't, we, we, you know, we hide by, you know, bathroom. Those are like the three, <laughs> three English words they might know, and that's about it. Right, exactly. And what's so fascinating, too, is these people are so true to their word, and their knowledge is, it's so it has never been seen before. And people always say to me, oh my gosh, aren't you creating content around this? But I'm very respectful of their traditions and values. I actually, ironically, don't create any content. I just listen. I absorb it. I listen. Um, And they would actually prefer that these secrets not be shared or they're not ready or they're, you know, they don't want to put it out there. So it's just, I internalize it and I, I appreciate it so much. So hopefully one day when they're ready, I could share on behalf of them, their, you know, their secrets and, you know, give them credit and such. Cause a lot of these, there's so many talented people out there, um, that are just not ready for social media. So there's still so much to be discovered. Yeah. Uh, you know, I deal, I work with a lot of indie artists and a lot of them, you know, and, and just like a lot of true, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't want to say professionals, but people who are really into what they're doing, 
they're into their music. The social media, everything else, that's just, okay. I mean, I guess if I have to, I will, but I just want to make music. And to, to get them out of their shell, to you know, come on the show, or you know, some of them don't, don't have an Instagram or a TikTok, or a, they don't even have a website, but okay, but you need to develop more. Uh, it's great that you, you're, you're a great musician, great writer, great singer, great artist, what have you, but you need to get into the social media because, as we all know, that's where everyone is finding everyone. Yes, that, that is it. So I do, you know, but they're, um, and the same thing too, I was in St. Martin and I'll ask them, do you have a social media page? Uh, and they will say no. Mm-hmm. They will, um, so, you know, you don't want to step on their toes, if you will. Um, though what they are sharing is so valuable. Uh, but it, it, it's a whole other world. You know, integrating social media, I mean, it's, it's a whole other ball game. Too. So there's there's still a lot out there. There's still a lot out there, just like the billions and billions of uploads daily. Right, and, and as you well know, because you know, between uh, everything that you're doing, social media is a job all by itself. Yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh, is it? Oh my gosh. I'll say, <laughs> you know, funny people. That's the world. You know. Oh, are you still managing these things? You know, so we we do post that on social, but it's not. You know, our business. It's everything's coming into us at such a rapid pace through the website um, that all the rest is fluff, if, if you will. Like, I'm not, you know, content creation is honestly, it's so overwhelming. Yep. Um, and to hire someone to do content creation, mm-hmm. it's not even worth it. I mean, eh, I don't know, that's a whole other other story perhaps. But the, the brunch account uh, is up and running year round. So we're, that's, that's the focus at the moment. So, Vanessa, when did you start planning this party? Was it like last the holiday season? And uh, I mean, how did you get to like to, ne- to today? You only have another week. I mean, how are you feeling about it? Oh, my God. I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. Well, it's all fall. It's so funny is we started planning it in late March, uh, but we didn't go full force into it until May, late May. Um, so, you know, originally I actually said to my team, I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> I said, I'm not ready. Um, I was, I was really honest with them. I said, eh, why don't we, cause we're, we're talking about doing the event elsewhere, which we will make a big announcement at, at the event. Um, so they, this is, we're not done yet this year. Uh, so I'm really excited about that. Uh, but something told me just, just do it, just do it. And it's so fascinating how everything fell into place so quickly within the last, I would say six weeks. It, it dawned on people, oh my goodness, it's happening. This mm-hmm. is it. We're going for it. And I couldn't be any more excited. I, I, we're, we are beyond ready. That's awesome. Well, I'm, that is so exciting. And you know, as you said before, having Brian Kelly and Sean Kosky of Ticket to Events, you could not have a better team backing you and getting ready for all of this because you know what? They, yeah. they don't stop working. I, I've literally... <laughs> DM them or text them in the middle of the night. So now before I fall asleep, let me, you know, so tomorrow morning, I wake up in the morning, five minutes later, you know, they already responded. I was, I was closing my eyes already. It's like, okay, well, they're up. <laughs> that is amazing. I mean, that, that's the people, like, I'm the same way. I am a workaholic. I, you, I tell people, like, don't be afraid to text me at, like, six in the morning. I have to be up at 5.30 in the morning because I have my UK team that I have to answer. I order in Dubai that are closing up shop that I need to, you know, respond to right away um and i work around the clock i have a t i have someone that works for me in australia that i have to i have to be there um and of course they tell me oh i'll work around your time and i go no 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 no, no. i'm I, I like this i'm used to it. i thrive mm-hmm. on it but they're the tell you it's a it, they're a phenomenal team and if anyone wants to do an event anywhere in the world especially in the hamptons you need an event planner yes. i don't people try they'll try to do it on their own but it, it, you, it, you you can't do everything. You just can't. If you're going to host, you need an event. You need an event team, and I cannot recommend ticket to events enough. Mm-hmm. And we've had that conversation with uh, Brian and Sean. For the by the time you run around doing what you're doing to try to put this event together, for the couple of dollars that you think you might have saved, you could have just hired them, sat back, and said, "Okay, I know my party is on X Y Z date. I know I just have to show up." It was Brian. And Sean have it all covered, and you just go and you have a good time. You enjoy they the run party, around, mm-hmm. you know, getting everything and making sure this is right, that's right. We got more ice. This this, this guest is here. This guest, it's just and for the for the dollar amount, and especially out in the Hamptons, you know, people are throwing big events. 
um, you know, money should not really be an issue. So you might as well just hire event plans. Mm-hmm. And yes, Brian and Sean are the go-to guys for anything that you need. They are to Elf. And then if anyone's throwing an event in Miami, Palm Beach, Delray Beach, mm-hmm. uh, and, you know, uh, Florida, really, or really anywhere. They'll fly anywhere. I think they did an event recently in in Mexico. Um, and then if we take this event internationally, they're, come, they're we're all going together. <laughs> now, speaking of going together, how can my audience find, follow, and keep up with everything Vanessa Gordon, Hampton's Interactive Brunch, and East End Taste? Amazing. Yes. So we are on most major social media platforms at East End Taste. We are only on Instagram, Hamptons Interactive Brunch for the event. Um, So again, East End Taste website is eastendtastemagazine.com. Or if you just type in eastendtaste.com, it'll go to the same uh, point. And once again, yeah, East End Taste, all major social media channels, uh, Twitter, Facebook, Pinterest, you name it, we're there. And again, Hampton's Interactive Brunch on Instagram. And we are very receptive. Either myself, Brian or Sean, or one of our social media team members will respond within 12 hours. Well, that sounds great. Vanessa Gordon, thank you for being on the Big Fat Joey Show. I wish you nothing but luck and success and maybe a little sleep and all that you do. Always a pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Vanessa. It was nice speaking to you. Likewise. I look forward to speaking with you again. See you soon. Absolutely. Bye-bye. She is on fire. This weekend is going to be amazing, and I just can't wait. She's doing amazing things, and she's a mom, too. I don't know how she does it. I don't know I'm how so she, impressed. don't know how she does it. She's, she's got a, a million things in the fire mm-hmm. trying to get them all done. She's got uh, employees around the world, and you know what? She has taken the event of the interactive brunch and made it into the must-attend event of the summer. Well, speaking of summer events, up next, we speak with Joanne J. Bird Phillips and all that she's doing with the Strong Box Theater and the Strong Box in the Park. Because you know what? We're covering the east end of Long Island with Vanessa, and now we're covering the west end of Long Island, specifically East Rockaway, with Joanne J. Bird Phillips. All right, everyone, let's welcome to the line. Mover and shaker and marketing ambassador for the Strong Box Theater, soon to open in East Rockaway, New York. J. Bird, Joanne Phillips. J. Bird, welcome to the Big Fat Joey Show. How are you? Hey, Big Fat Joey, how are you? And thank you so much for having me on your wonderful show. Well, thank you for being on. Jay Bird's a longtime friend of the Big Fat Joey Show, and she always has something going on because she's always doing something. That's why they call her Mover and Shaker. She's a writer, she's a credentialed writer. She's Nassau County uh, Woman of the Year a couple of years ago. Uh, she's doing producing, art directing. She's a musician. She plays in a rock band. Listen, this, this whole show could be just her credentials alone, but... For today, we're talking about her being the marketing ambassador for the soon-to-open Strong Box Theater, Tony Leone's Strong Box Theater in East Rockaway, New York. So, Jay Bird, tell us all about the Strong Box Theater, how it came to be. You know, we had Tony on last week, and I said, well, right. what's better than to have on then marketing ambassador, Joanne Jay Bird Phillips? So tell us a little bit more about, about the theater. Well, you know, I... I Met Tony and his wife just randomly at um, Arts in the Plaza in Long Beach, New York, which is a wonderful weekly outdoor event with vendors and music. And he was handing out promotional postcards for um, their show that was going to be held at the really nice amphitheater at Memorial Park in East Rockway of the 39th Step. And I started to talk to him, and boy, it was like I got hit by a thunderbolt. I was so enamored with what he wants to do. And so I guess in typical Jaybird, you know, fashion, I said, I love what you're doing. How can I help? And that was a year ago. And we've just been, you know, collaborating ever since. Um, his, he is uh, formerly an actor from up in Buffalo, uh, New York. And his dream was always to have a black box theater and have uh, presentations in that. 
And so what he actually did is he purchased the um, closed East Rockaway Bank and Trust Building in East Rockaway, New York, which is a beautiful building. I'm actually sitting outside the, the, the theater the building right now as we speak. I had just seen Tony. I was inside. We were going over the architecture's plans and, and seeing what they're doing inside the building. And what an idea. First of all, this man is a, a brave, bold new concept to open a brand new performing arts venue while we're going through what we're going through with this crazy world right now. Yeah, definitely, but, uh, definitely bold of him to yeah. do that with the, the economy the way it is and you know, people just just barely getting back to going out into uh, you know going to venues, going to restaurants. Right, and and they are craving the arts, and of course, you know, I'm a huge arts advocate. Um, the theater itself will be opening in winter of 2023, which is a, a good idea, not to do it right now. Um, you know, he's he's being very smart about the entire thing. This will be um, featuring a state of the art. Off Off Broadway Theater, live music, uh, which focusing on independent artists and original music, which I think is extraordinary. Uh, film screenings, live comedy, an art gallery, and a beautiful lounge. Um, and it's in Western Nassau County, which is great. It's just blocks away from the Long Island Railroad Station, and just a few miles away from the Nassau County New York City borderline, which is nice for people who if they want to come out from Manhattan or Queens. So it's, it's, this is just extraordinary. What's in here is, um, as I had seen last year and now just uh, about an hour ago, is what they've done inside this bank building. Um, and they've had to demolish it, and uh, construction will be starting soon on various parts. But the main feature in here is the 10-ton vault door. Uh, he just showed me the video of how it took about eight people to take off this 10 ton vault door and move it to another spot that will be near the lounge. I can see anyone who comes into this venue will want to have their photos taken in front of this 10 ton vault door. Yeah, Extraordinary. That, that is definitely going to be a centerpiece of the theater. I mean, not, not every theater has a, a vault door and, you know, and you know, a lot of places and, and there's a, and there's a, um, there's a restaurant down in uh, Suffolk County over in Iceland called Tellers. It's a high-end steakhouse, and it used to be, I want to say, a chemical bank back in the day. And that's ergo the name Tellers, and same thing. You know, they have the vault, the vault doors, the whole shebang. So it's it's a very unique experience when you see that. Right. Now, yes, it's something very very different. I mean, the building itself, this bank, is historic from the 1930s. Um, the outside is completely intact. It has a beautiful high arches uh, on the exterior of the building. Um, this is a, a, a dream come true for him and a dream come true for me as I become the marketing ambassador for th this theater and this organization. I've been welcomed to the family. In the interim, what they've been doing is starting last year and as we speak right now this summer, they're producing and um, presenting strong box in the park, which is at the amphitheater in the uh, beautiful um, Memorial Park at East Rockaway, New York. And this features um, eight um, one-act plays. They had submissions from playwrights, for over 500 playwrights from around the country, and three indie original music acts as well, which, uh, again, uh, I love to support indie music, and so, and so does this gentleman. Um, this also was wonderful. Uh, last year, they had the 39 Steps, which is sort of a combination of from you know, Alfred Hitchcock and uh, Monty Python together. Yeah, was it extraordinary? I fell in love with everything there. And I was at opening night here for Strong Box in the Park. Um, it was called the Festival of, of Stage and Song. And um, I'll be there on closing night as well. For those who are listening, this is Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays. Uh, coming up July 29th to 31st, and then August 5th through 7th. Uh, if this is a pay what you wish, it's a pay what you wish also, which is just amazing. I can tell you when I was there opening night um, recently that it, it was well-received. 
they had um, a very large crowd in, in attendance. Uh, you could bring your chairs. Uh, people brought uh, blankets and, and their picnic foods. There are some picnic tables and seating there as well. There's a bathroom. You know, things that you need when you're outdoors. And it was it's, it's shaded under trees, which was really nice for summer weather. And I know I keep saying extraordinary. I don't mean to be redundant, but but really, this is just remarkable. What an amazing, positive feeling and vibe from everyone. The, you know, the, the actors, the, the crew, the audience. Um, we, we really need something uplifting like this um, these days, and he will be providing it. And it's great. You know, like you said, it's in... It's in Nassau County, western, southwest Nassau County, which doesn't uh, really get a, a lot of traffic through there. You know, it, I, like I said, we had Tony on last week. Great guy speaking about putting this all together. And like you said earlier in the interview, you know, going out on a ledge and, uh, you know, putting something together in this uh, uncertain economic times. And in the meantime, he is giving back to the community he loves so much, East Rockaway, by having the... Uh, performances over in the uh, East Rockaway Memorial Park, and you know, they're free. So how can you go wrong with a festival of stage and song, East Rockaway Memorial Park, this upcoming, well, this current weekend, um, the uh, 29, 30, 31, and then next weekend, 5, 6, and 7. So, Joanne, how can my audience, first and foremost, find, follow, and keep up with everything Joanne J. Bird Phillips, and how can they keep up with everything Strongbox Theater? Well, for Strongbox Theater, you can go to strongboxtheater.com, sign up for their newsletter, and everything is there. It's constantly updated. You'll actually see uh, photographs of what the bank looked like at, uh, at you know, the beginning, and then you can see photos of the demolition. Um, so it's a wonderful process to see how they're going through there. As far as finding about anything about me, well, <laughs> your really best bet is to call me on the phone or send me a text message. There, you know, there's um, there's Dangerous, the Broadway's new mystery. I'm associate producer of that. Um, and we're actually doing um, um, a, a workshop for investors. This is done under the auspices of the Bay Street Theater in Sag Harbor. Um, we will be doing uh, this coming late fall or early winter workshops in Manhattan um, for investors. Uh, danger! It's a, it's a new musical. It takes place with the gangster era in the 1930s. Um, it's, it's an incredible whodunit that has plot twists and turns throughout. It'll really like keep you on your toes till the very end. Uh, the the team is led by. Um, Neil Rubenstein, a multi um, Emmy Award winner, um, and um, he, he's our, our our fearless leader. Uh, I would, you know, he's a five time Emmy nominee as well, Tony Award and Drama Desk Award nominee. Um, I'm just going to give you a little bit about these people just quickly because it'll just take me too long. Because people who know me know I can't make a long story short. But I, I just have to say this: the, the team for, for this is uh, the composer, playwright, co-lyricist John Intracaso, brilliant, brilliant musician, um, ASCAP Award winner. You're, you're looking at look, look at this team: co-lyricist, drama desk award nominee Michael Colby. We are looking at two-time Tony Award nominee for Tootsie and Holiday Inn, um, Dennis Jones, Phil Reno, a music director, two-time Grammy nominee. Um, so this is going to be something, and I, I, I will say something right now. Is recently, uh, it was about two months ago, in the New York Post, um, famous gossip columnist and, and writer Cindy Adams had a headline, and she the headline was "Tony Awards Declining, Just Like Broadway Original." But I am telling you, this will be a kick-ass original Broadway production. So if anyone is interested, if you want, you know, investor information, again, you can call me, you can text me at 516-320-3026. I'm going to talk about Turnpike Joe and the Traffic Jam. I'm performing with them for 30 years. The band's in its 45th year. 
We'll be doing a, a, a free outdoor concert on Thursday, August 4th, 7.30 to 9 p.m. at the beautiful outdoor Esplanade on Seaport Historic Nordical Mile. Um, and that is for the Long Island Arts Council with Seaport's 22nd Annual Sunset Concert Series. I'll tell you about Long Beach Rocks, New York, in its 11th year. That's done under the auspices of Jaybird Music for the Arts, my nonprofit that supports performing arts and music in New York education. We provide new to as new music instruments to schools that need them. Um, and because of the pandemic, this was something that was live in the Long Beach Public Library Auditorium for many, many years. Uh, the pandemic, I decided a few years ago to move it to a live stream format, showcasing and supporting New York indie artists only. So we had Anne Klein from Broadway, uh, Jordan Stewak, who, who was in Les Mis. Uh, it, it, just amazing. So this is sort of, I guess, a little bit of what's going on. I mean, I can go on and on. There's more. <laughs> well, that that sounds like you got a full plate there. Well, Joanne J. Bird Phillips, thank you for being on the Big Fat Joey Show. I wish you nothing but luck and success in all that you do. Thank you so much. And again, if I just say, people could call me or text me at 516-320- 0026. Leave a message, leave a voicemail. I will get back to you if in any interest in any of these wonderful artistic um, events. Well, that sounds great. Well, thank you, Joanne, for being on the Big Fat Joey Show. Thank you, Big Fat Joey. Wow. Jay Bird is doing her thing. She's moving and a shaking. Well, this is awesome. I cannot wait to attend. This sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun in Nassau County. Definitely a lot of fun in Nassau County. So everyone, check out Strong Box Theater over in East Rockaway. Check them out. Go out into the park. Get yourself some entertainment on. Have some fun. Got another weekend of it this upcoming Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, the 5th, the 6th, and the 7th of August. Come out and support. And then definitely come back to the theater when it opens up in the fall slash winter of 2023. And finally, we wrap up today's show with another indie artist of ours. We'll be speaking with Jaden Zoe. We'll be listening to her hit song, What is Love? And we'll be having a great, great time listening to her, her interview and talking about all that she's been doing. All right, everyone, let's welcome to the line singer and artist, Jaden Zoe. Jaden. Welcome to the Big Fat Joey hey. Show. How are you? I'm so lovely. How are you? Doing well myself. I am glad to have you on. Super excited to hear everything you've got going on and all that you're up to. But before we get into any of that, tell us a little <laughs> bit about yourself, who you are, how you got into this crazy business known as music, and what's going on. Well, I'm Jaden Zoe. I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Now we're in Houston, Texas. And Brooklyn in the house. Basically, music. I know, Brooklyn. <laughs> I've always been, um, you know, into music. Music has always been part of me. Like, I grew up around music. I started out doing, like, spoken word and poetry. And then I just turned that into lyrics and melodies. And now I got music. <laughs> and there you go. Now you have music. Well, speaking of music, you've got a brand new hit song, What is Love, out and about. Can you yes. tell us a little bit about yes. it? What made you write it? Because my audience already knows where I'm going with this. If you can be just as mildly <laughs> successful as T. Swift, writing about love, love life, your relationships, I think you'd be all right. But what is What is Love? What is Love? Um, the song is definitely about, you know, falling in love, but just trying to understand, you know, what it feels like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's all about, like, just grasp, grasping the energy of, you know, the person you're in love with, trying to figure it out, you know? It's very, it's very, um, poetic, but it's very straightforward, if I, if I may say. <laughs> Well, yes, you know, that's what love yes. is, because without love, what do you have? You know, is there any, any precipitous in life that made you write about it, or what made you go with, you know, what is love? 
You know, it, it actually hasn't. It just was the instrumental. You know, I got the um, the the vibe from the beat that I heard. Like when I got the beat, I just turned into this character. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I wasn't really writing based off my own experience. I was writing based off of someone else's experience or what other people can relate to. You know, it was a vibe that I got for the song. Less less of what it is about me. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Bringing in the vibes. Now, <laughs> speaking of vibes, yeah. you, know, you don't just do singing. You're not just a performer. You're also an actress. You've been on Chasing Destiny on BET, Not Safe Show with Nikki Glaser. You've been on Jimmy Kimmel Live, and also a, a, a fashion model. You, you, you've you done New York and yes. LA Fashion Weeks. So tell us a little bit about yes. that. How, how is that? That's, you know, being on Fashion Week. Because I, I see all these... You know, just uh, you, you, you know, the guys and girls who, who are the models, you, you know, you're changing. Yes. You're literally naked in front of people you don't know for like 10 seconds and keep running. <laughs> That's very true. That is very true. I'm pretty used to it now. But being a model like a fashion week, both in New York and L.A., is definitely an experience because you get to meet so much other people that are fashion designers, models, um, aspiring artists. You guys, you know, work together for many years. You know, if you get uh, picked by the same designers or, you know. But it, it, it was really fun um, being able to see the runway, see the reactions of people. Because it's really different from doing a show, like when you're performing and doing music and you're performing on stage singing and then you're on a runway. It's like two different energies. So being on a runway, is just like, okay, boom. You know, here, here I am. Here I go. Here's my tattoos. Here's my hair. What's up? And then you get to become like, you know, um, basically a brand ambassador for the brand. So you're turning into another character or, you know, the look that you have, you know, it's fun being able to see what you can fit. Sometimes you wear clothes you probably would never even wear, which makes it even more fun because you're like, oh, I get to do this. This is different. You know, something I thought I would never wear. It actually looks cute. So it opens your mind to a lot of different other opportunities. And, you know, it's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, I mean, listen, let's just take uh, the Victoria's Secret models. Who's going to wear a big pair of wings anytime soon? Strutting down the street. Right. Right? So that's, you know. And I know. I, I remember. I mean, I, I mean, I think I would. I would. I think I would wear a pair of wings, like, okay. on a regular day. All that's right. me, though. You know, I, I remember a George Michael video. Uh, and I'm just, for some reason, I'm just blanking out. Um, it had um, it was all about models. And I remember this one model had on, like, this uh, bustier with, like, uh, motorcycle um mirrors on it i was like yeah that's cool mm-hmm. i mean you, you have to obviously be a certain you know person to wear that body style what have you but right like, but yeah like i said a lot of stuff at least at least from what i see a lot of stuff i see on fashion shows i would venture to say 90 percent of it never sees the mass market because some of it is just so far out or bizarre right or <laughs> the 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 person that it's going to fit there aren't that many of them in the world enough to justify making a line of clothing for you know a handful of people who fit that uh body style right that's very true i definitely agree well that that's good you know so you 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 have a line now i know you also speaking of being a model you have your own merch line what's that all about yes so it's just it's called um forever young tour so it's a merch it's a t-shirt we have um, white and we have black. So it's like all tour dates on the back of the cities that I am definitely going to tour in um, in the near future. So um, it's a pretty cool shirt. I wish I was able to like, hey, here you go. <laughs> but um, it's pretty cool. Um, all the tour dates are on the back. Um, it's a science signature shirt by me. Um, and obviously my face is on the front, but it's, it's a really dope concept. And um, I definitely have those to give at my shows. We're going to do pop-up shops with the merchandise as well. So it's going to be pretty dope. All right. And w- when do you think you might come out on a uh, tour? So I would say, honestly, um, we're going to move the tour into um, pretty soon. I can say it's pretty soon. <laughs> right now, pretty soon, honestly. All right. we're, all, we're actually working on that, getting that together. All right. Well, soon sounds good to me. So let's do this. How can my audience find, follow, and keep up with everything Jade and Zoe, get information on your tour, and pick up some of that merch? Well, you guys can definitely follow me on social media, which is on Instagram, Twitter, at 
Jaden Zoe, which is J A E D E N Z O E. Once again, J A E D E N Z O E. I definitely will have all of the links in my bio, so you guys will be able to find the merch, the tour dates, the single video, etc. So, all that sounds great. Jaden Zoe, singer, actress. Fashion model, <laughs> thank you for being on the Big Fat Joey Show. I wish you nothing but yes. luck and success in all that you do. Thank you so much, Joey. All right, speak soon. <laughs> Have a great day. You too, darling. Well, there you go. So we got another indie artist doing her thing, branching out, singing, modeling, acting, doing a little bit of everything. I'm so impressed with these indie artists. Let me tell you, everyone that you have on is just so talented. They just It's just unbelievable. Definitely, definitely unbelievable. Now, speaking of unbelievable, up next, we're going to be hearing her new hit song, What is Love? So for now, this is Big Fat Joey. Big Fat Joey Show, along here with Sin, reminding everyone to make, make every, every sandwich, sandwich count. count. Peace. Thanks for a girl like me to fill all your time.